How's it going guys? Welcome back to Manti Gaming. I wanted to give you guys a quick uh, guide here as far as the Shattered Worlds. Well, I'll try to make it quick, but there's honestly quite a bit in here, but I'm going to try to simplify it and that way you guys can learn everything you want to know about Shattered Worlds uh, that we know so far uh, in a short amount of time. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start with the rewards, guys, because that's, that's what most people want to hear about. I mean, in all honesty, that we all do stuff because we want to know what we get for doing it. So let's go ahead and jump over here to the rewards guy, and I'll tell you guys what you get. All right, so right here we have signature items. We have the Sigil of Slaying, Ferocious Sigil, and Aggression Sigil. Aggression Sigil, basically, when it activates, everything around you is aggressive, just like the aggro potions. Um, ferocious signals, uh, Sigils sorry, uh, make everything instantly respawn for 30 seconds within Curadel's dungeon. That could be really good for some Slayer tasks in there. Uh, the Sigil of Slaying makes it so that Slayer experience is, is uh, increased by 10% for 30 seconds when it activates. Um, these all uh, are put into the new Sigil slot that's in your inventory over here, as you can see. Um, I don't know yet uh, as far as how good these are, actually, though, because I have not unlocked them, but I will be working on unlocking them. Hopefully, I'll be doing that on live stream. Actually, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of this minigame on live stream, as is quite fun, um, entertaining for live streams. But anyway... Um, they do cost 45 million anima, which is extremely expensive. It takes you, uh, there, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, discussion right now as to how long it takes you to get anima, and as this thing is brand new, we're not exactly sure how long it's going to take, but people are saying anywhere from three and a half to four hours in order to get 45 million anima. So when you get to the higher stages, it's basically about 10 million per hour, maybe a little bit more. Um, and so as you can see, unlocking these could be expensive, so I don't really know if they're worth it yet. We will have to find out. If you find out, then please put it in the comments below and help everybody out. The next thing here, guys, is going to be uh, the two things that people are mostly going to be wanting from this minigame. It's going to be the two new abilities. This one right here basically sounds like a barge kind of ability where it, you jump at your enemies and deal damage in a, in a flurry. So it's kind of, it's kind of, it basically sounds like a barge hurricane. And it's a basic ability for 65 attack. It does take 63 million anima though, so it's going to be a little while before I unlock that. Um, Salt the Wound here, uh, it sounds a lot like Storm Shards, basically. Make it so your Dazing is shot. Uh, your Dazing shot does Punctured, uh, requires 6 range to do it. Uh, and then what it does is it deals weapon damage for every Puncture stack on the enemy and resets, resets the Puncture's duration. Uh, I really don't know how good that's going to be either, but we'll have to find out. It does sound pretty fun, though, and it's always exciting to get new abilities. The next thing here is going to be some cosmetic overrides. We're also going to be some Abyssal Slayer tasks, which right now they seem like complete crap, but maybe they'll be better later. Um, right now, um, I, I have had someone test this, and they basically said that they got a White Knight task, and it was only giving them 67 Slayer EXP per kill. But it could definitely vary depending on, on what task you have. Although it has been confirmed that you are able to do regular Slayer tasks in this minigame, which I will get into more later. So this whole Shattered World uh, Abyssal Slayer contract doesn't really seem worth it unless you're just becoming addicted to this minigame. <laughs> um, the huge Slayer XP lamp. With it being 4 million anima, and they do say 3.5 to 4 hours for 45, that means you're going to get about 10 of these lamps. Well, actually, about 11 of these lamps in a 3.5 to 4 hour period. This could be good. So um, this, this could end up being a pretty good way to do an alternative to Slayer. We'll have to find out later. But just know that that is available to buy. Next thing here, guys, is going to be a Baby Tusca. So right now I have bought the Tier 1, Tier 2. I'm actually going to buy these here. I'm actually going to go ahead and buy Tier number 3. Boom. And I'm going to buy Tier number 4. Boom. They got them. All right. So Tier number 5 is going to be next. As you see, you basically buy these in order. So you do have to buy all the lower tier for this pet before you can actually buy the main pet which is the tier 9. Um, and basically, it is a baby Tusca. If you look at the pictures, you can tell it is a Tusca. It's also made out of anima, which if you remember that you go and you collect the anima during the Tusca minigame, this is this whole thing is basically like an extension of the lore involved with the Tusca minigame, or well, well with Tusca in general, which is kind of cool, and it's really cool to see Tusca coming back in here. Next thing, guys, is going to be all the first-generation Slayer masks. You can buy them all here. Um, most people probably already have all these, but if you're missing any of them, then you can feel free to grab them. I would say the, uh, the Mask of Dagonoth, by the way, is going to be really useful. If you don't have that one unlocked, that would probably be the first one out of these that I would unlock. The reason why is because you do fight quite a bit of Dagonoths, including Dagonoth Kings in this minigame. Uh, so that way, uh, you can actually force a Dagonoth task and then go get some extra Slayer XP while you're doing this minigame. Next thing here, guys, is going to be the Slayer Mask Generation 2. Uh, these are all the mostly useful. These are these are probably the honestly the best Slayer masks in the game. Well, that's kind of obvious, but um, these are the ones you're really going to end up using. 
but you can end up buying all of them in here, although they are extremely expensive because the Mask of Abyss, the Mask of Gloom, uh, Ganodermic, uh, Aerith, I mean, the best ones are all going to cost you 135 million anima. So unless that comes out the way where you can get like 50, anima, 50 million anima per hour eventually, <laughs> which doesn't seem too likely, then it could take you quite a bit of time to unlock these masks. I'm not really sure if it's actually worth unlocking these through this reward shop because it is a lot quicker in most in most situations it's gonna be a lot quicker to unlock these from Vic the Trader. But if you really want to unlock them from here, then you can do that. And they are available. There are a few more things to note here for the Shattered Worlds update, and that is basically that you can do this at any level you want to, but you do have to have a RuneScape membership. Also, there are a couple other things that you can get from this um, that are not rewards listed in the uh, reward shop. Um, that would be a rare chance at a pet, which is the Abyssal Hound. Uh, you can get that from the uh, box, or you can also get that from doing the uh, the challenges. Also, it says on here, too, that the challenges are weekly, so it looks like they're going to be able to reset per week. Um, with that in mind, it actually may be far easier to get um, a large amount of uh, the anima just by saving up by doing this event weekly rather than doing it as a grind. Um, just because of the fact that for the silver one alone, you get 500,000 anima. For the gold, I'm sure you get far more, although I have not beaten the, the gold one yet myself. Um, I will probably work on that later, but yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine it's going to give you quite a bit more. I believe I got 50000 for the bronze. That wasn't that great, but if you can only do the bronze and the silver uh, once per week, is that's still 550000 in a very short amount of time. So this could end up being a new weekly event to do. Um, in all honesty, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing with it myself. All right, guys, so this is a combat minigame, so it's going to be a safe PVM combat minigame, although it should be noted, though, that if you take damage in the minigame and you teleport out of the minigame, then you will continue taking damage outside of the minigame and you could die. So just make sure that if you were actually... Uh, I, I, I would just recommend, honestly, just not teleporting out of the minigame unless you are in an area where you're not taking any damage. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to go over a couple of useful things, and then I'm actually going to show you the game a little more in depth. So right here, we got the rewards station over here, which, by the way, this is located in Lumbridge Swamp, just in case anybody was wondering. It is located in the in the, uh, the area over here, right oh, next to the Wizard's Tower. So you can do the Wizard's Tower teleport, or you can just teleport to Lumbridge to get here very quickly. Um, the, there is a banker right here where you can bank, collect, and everything like that, so it's very easily accessible. Uh, if you look at my inventory right here, I want to give you guys a rundown as to some great things to be using in this minigame. I'll actually show you the minigame so you understand a little bit further. Uh, the illuminated books are going to be really good for a pocket slot. The holy wrench is going to be amazing because of the fact you will need prayer during this. Um, the enhanced Excalibur is almost a must-have. It basically is a must-have. So if you have this, then be sure to bring this because you will be able to heal during the minigame. It's going to be very, very helpful. Amulet of Souls is amazing during this because of the fact that whether you're using Reflect or using uh, SS or whatever you're using, you're going to be getting more of a benefit from that, so it's going to be very, very, very useful. If you don't have that, I would highly recommend using one of these Farsight Snipers or these or the, whatever other Dungeoneering Saradamon necklace you have that you're able to put a blood uh, shard onto it. That way it has the blood effect. Um, that's going to be really useful as well. So I'll either use a blood version of these or use the Amulet of Souls um, I personally prefer the Amulet of Souls. Another useful item here is going to be the Mighty Slayer Helmet. Um, the reason why is because if you have a Slayer task, then you can get um, a damage bonus uh, on, on the enemies in here. Um, I would use this only as a switch for the most part, though, because the fact that uh, your normal helm is going to do a little bit better than using the Slayer Helm in most cases because you're not always guaranteed to hit the Slayer task while you're in the minigame. But it is is not a bad idea to throw that in your inventory. Um, at higher tiers, this is definitely going to be uh, much more useful because the enemies do get extremely strong, and then that way you have a better chance of being able to survive if you have a Slayer task involving what's in the map. The next thing here, guys, is going to be Auras. Penance Aura, as far as I know right now, Penance Aura is the best Aura that I can possibly think of for this minigame. And the reason why is because you do constantly take hordes of damage from uh, enemies, and uh, Penance will help to make sure that you can constantly use your Tier 95 uh, prayers along with soul split the entire time if you have penance. You don't really have any problem running both of those alone with a uh, a prayer renewal or a holy overload active. Between those, you will never run out of prayer. Uh, the next thing here is going to be the greater runic accuracy or whatever other accuracy aura. Those are also nice. Um, dark magic auras is, is pretty good. And any of the reckless ones where it boosts up your damage is also good as well. 
Although the ones like this that boost up your damage and reduce your defense, I'm, I would be very cautious using those at higher waves, as you will see when I go in the minigame. The waves can be extremely difficult, so if you're trying to rush the small waves, then it's definitely a great a great thing to do. Um, and one of these one of these auras actually would be pretty amazing for the smaller waves. Vampirism is also a very useful aura here. Um, although I would say that just vampirism alone is often not enough to heal you during the harder waves. Um, as far as food, you're going to want to use rock tails or brews. Uh, depending on your combat level, though, if you are max, you're not going to need to use rock tails or brews until after level 60 and maybe level 70. Um, if you are lower combat, then using brews and rock tails might be more useful earlier. But for the most part, you guys are able to get free food from this mini game, and it will be just fine for to healing you on the lower floors, as they are not that difficult for somebody who is maxed. Um, as far as your uh, your boosting stuff, uh, if you do not have access to overloads, and use whatever the highest thing you can use. But if you have access to overloads, I, I highly recommend using Supreme Overload Salves here. The reason why is because the Supreme Overload is going to give you the highest amount of uh, boost. It's also going to give you the Prayer Restore, and it's also going to get rid of that poison. Because you do fight a lot of Calphites and other things in here that will poison you. So it's definitely good to save some inventory space and just use the Supreme Overload Salve. If you don't have those or you don't want to use those because they're more expensive, then you can use the Holy Overload Potions. I don't recommend using regular Overload because that would just be wasteful, but the Holy Overload Potions are very useful here to keep your prayer up. Um, so that's pretty much just some uh, some inventory stuff. You can basically use whatever you feel like using for combat against hordes of enemies. Um, as far as what combat style the best is best to use here, Mage is definitely going to be the best one that I know of so far. Just because the AoEs are really good for Mage. Um, and then also, Mage actually has very good typing against the monsters that are inside of the uh, area. Um, and then if you have a higher high tier mage weapon, you can pretty much walk through it like it's like you're not even fighting anything. So I would highly recommend using mage. The next thing, guys, is going to be using range. Um, and then uh, range, basically for the same reasons as mage, it's just you have a little bit less AOEs with range. Uh, and then melee, I really don't recommend using melee unless you just really feel like using melee. But if you're going to use melee, then I definitely would use a scythe. If you do not have a scythe or a lance, then I would not use melee. Really, 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 really would not use melee. The reason why I don't, I don't recommend using melee, and a lot of people in the beginning were like, melee is the best, and I would definitely definitely argue against that. The reason why is because you do get negative perks inside this game, which will make it so that uh, melee is extremely difficult to use. Um, so what will happen is you will end up getting it to where uh, you will have a perk where the enemies will explode, and if the enemies explode, they only explode at melee range, and then therefore making melee extremely bad to use. Um, but if you go to the far right corner, the uh, the big red portal, you're going to see these challenges. So if you go over here to Shattered Worlds, basically the way it works, guys, is you're going to be starting out with World 1 to 5 with extremely weak enemies and working your way up. Um, it, is a, it is pretty boring, honestly, uh, to play this minigame after, like, Wave 10. Um, so wave wave one to ten, you know, you're like, oh, it's a pretty fun mini game. But I'll be honest with you, dudes. If you are maxed and you're going and you're working on like waves like ten through like fifty, and all honesty, you're really boring because it's all just really slow, really really weak, monotonous enemies that don't really take any kind of challenge to kill. So it's kind of boring. Uh, but once you get to sixty plus, uh, it does get a lot more exciting because you also get far more of the reward. Uh, anima, and then you also fight far more challenging enemies. So if you click the equip me on the left, you will get a whole bunch of tier 60 weapons and tier 60 hybrid armor. The tier 60 weapons include range, mage, and melee. And then for the range and the mage, you do not have to bring anything in order to uh, for ammunition. So if you want to, it's actually not a terrible idea for the extremely low waves of like maybe 1 through 25 or 1 through 30. You can actually use the free equipment, and everything dies so fast that it's not really you're not really going to notice any difference between that and a tier 90 just because of the fact that they die in one hit anyway. Uh, so it's not a bad idea, but otherwise I would, I would bring your own equipment. Um, as far as Feed Me, so what that does, I'm actually going to go ahead and click it. What Feed Me does is Feed Me basically makes it so that you uh, get a full inventory of these chickens that heal 1500 HP each. Um, it's a definitely a nice alternative to spending your own food here, but you will definitely, once you get to uh, tier 80 and above or tier 70 and above, um, you're definitely going to want, or you know, I, I keep saying tier, but world 70 and above, you're probably going to want to bring your own food. 
That's just because the enemies hit much harder, so using Bruise or Rock Tail is going to be much more useful. But I honestly have not even, myself, I, uh, I've gotten all the way to uh, World 75 now, or no, World 76, sorry. I'm a World 76 myself, um, and I have not had to use anything except for the chickens they give you. So it really depends on your, your overall combat level and your overall skill in combat. If you're a better player at combat, then you can probably just use the chickens in all honesty. <laughs> okay, guys, so one last thing before I hop in here is uh, familiars. You are able to use familiars here, so if you want to use a familiar, I would highly honestly recommend bringing a Steel Titan or bringing a Nihil. I don't really I don't really recommend bringing a Yak, um, and the reason why is just because, uh, uh, and my opinion on this could change a higher world, so keep in mind that with, with the fact that I'm only in the 70s right now, um, at higher worlds, maybe a Yak would be better. Um, but I have not needed to use anything above the normal chicken food right now, so a Nile or a Steel Titan to increase your DPS is definitely going to be far more useful, um, I would say, below World 80. Um, above World 80, uh, or if you're trying to do that gold challenge, then it might be better to use a Yak, but honestly, uh, you, know, you can just use it as your own discretion. If you don't have those unlocked, just use whatever thing you can use for the best combat. Um, honestly, if you can't use a Nihil, you cannot use a uh, Steel Titan, and you cannot use a Yak, then I would probably just bring a War Tortoise with some uh, extra equipment. All right, so I'm going to hop right in here, guys. So basically, you click the Feed Me if you want to get food, and then what you're going to do is you're going to choose a positive uh, mutator to start the game off with. Uh, the Feeling Pumped is uh, pretty bad. I'll, 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 go ahead and, I'll go ahead and describe a couple of the things in here and what you should probably not do and what you probably could do. Um, feeling Pumped is it sounds nice. You get a small chance to get unlimited adrenaline. It's not actually that useful. It's okay, um, but the thing is, you're fighting so many enemies in, the, in there that you you honestly never run out of adrenaline anyway. Um, so it's not really the greatest. Uh, if if you have nothing else to grab, then it's probably not better. Not bad to grab. Blood money. Blood money basically makes makes it so that every damage due to the enemies, you'll get extra anima. This is really, really, really not worth using until at least uh, area seventy. Um, but in all honesty, though, I really haven't found an area where I actually wanted to pick Blood Money. When I very first started this mini game, I thought Blood Money sounded amazing, but actually what you'll find out is it's really not that great because of the fact that they don't give you that much anima, especially at the lower level, so don't waste your time with that. Vampiric is nice. Vampiric is actually about the same as the Vampirism Aura. I'm not sure exactly how much it does heal, but it does heal a decent amount. You will notice it. Um, so Vampiric is a really good aura, as a really good mutator to pick. Um, but honestly, if you were starting off at level 1, I would skip Blood Money, skip Vampiric, because nothing's going to damage you, and just go with the Feeling Pumped. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with the uh, Vampiric to go here to show you guys an example. So when you start the actual game here, it's going to look like this, and you're just going to see hordes of enemies like this. So right now, if I if I had an uh, Autonomous, uh, autonom, uh, whatever these are, Automaton, yeah, I can't talk at all. If you have an automaton task, then you could sit here with the Slayer Helm and then do that. As you can see here, guys, with the Puro Puro chickens, they've given me the heal of 1,500. I'm not going to run through this entire thing, but I want to give you an idea, guys an idea of what it looks like and all. And as you see, my frame's been being complete crap because of the fact that I'm running too many things in the background like usual. Yeah, go me. Um, so, as you can see, they're only level 67, and as you kill them right here, you can, uh, yeah, you basically just get anima and you get combat EXP. The combat EXP is not that great, but it does get a lot better at higher levels. Also, the anima that you get per level does increase. The idea is going to be to kill 75% of the enemies on the map. As you can see up here, you have a bar that will start to fill as you as you kill things. You basically just want to kill 75% 70, of the map. There is no benefit to killing more, more than 75% of the map. Um, so really, honestly, just kill 75% and then be done. What you're going to do is you're going to look for the red portal. As you can see, you start out in the blue portal, you're going to be looking for the red one. Hey, look, it's the Matrix. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and beat this level, and now we're looking at some more mutators that you can pick from. You've got the Feeling Pump. Like I said, it doesn't really have that much use. It's, a, it's okay. Uh, power Grows is actually really bad because if you're using Overload, there's really no point to Power Grows. Um, charge is going to be the best one in the entire uh, minigame so far. Charge is pretty overpowered. Basically what you do is uh, you stack up electric energy balls and then you'll be able to just spray out damage to everything around you. It's pretty sweet. It stacks up to 10 times damage and can in, and end, end up hitting up to 500s um, basically uh, to everything in the entire area in an area effect damage. It's, it's pretty overpowered. In all honesty, if you have um, 
stacked up 10 shards and you're on the lower levels, you can honestly just walk through the entire map and just eliminate everything. So one other thing I wanted to get to, uh, guys, is also uh, the main goal here. So um, the 75% enemies you kill, you basically want to kill those enemies and then you want to hurry up and rush to the end of the map. So you want to try to get to it as fast as possible. It's the same concept as Dungeoneering. You don't really want to spend a whole lot of time in each map, uh, not any more time than you uh, absolutely have to. So as you can see right here, I'm basically going to be using Charge uh, with a little bit of Soul Splits. Charge does not uh, work on Soul Split, just keep that in mind, but it doesn't. it's it's okay anyway because it still does a ridiculous amount of damage. So um, kind of like I said, you can honestly just walk through, especially on a level like this. Um, I don't really even have to attack things, and this is only on the uh, four stacks. So what you're going to end up doing is at the end of each, uh, each, end of each set of levels, there's about five levels, um, you're going to be getting a treasure chest. So when you get that treasure chest, you can either uh, open it and get extra rewards then, or you can save it up and uh, kind of do a streak. So seems like the Jagex is really hooked on uh, doing things with streaks lately. Okay, guys, so that was the end of my run right there. So basically what you're going to get is a room like this. It's going to have uh, the treasure chest here called the, uh, well, actually, I think the name might change, or it might always be called a crack chest, I'm not really sure. But you'll have a chest right here where, like I said, this you can avoid this um, in order to keep your streak going. I'm going to go ahead and claim it right now for the video, uh, but uh, what happens is when you open it, it just sprays out a whole bunch of anima, and you get some bonus anima. There is a bank right behind this, so you can restock on supplies if you're using your own supplies. You can also uh, use that to uh, to switch gear, like if you're like, okay, well, this gear kind of sucks, or you, you want to try out different weapons or whatever, you can feel free to use the bank chest. You can also use that bank chest without resetting your streak, so there's not really any negative to using the bank chest at any time. It does kind of suck. There's no collect option, so if you're a person who does a lot of uh, investing or flipping or whatever, like I obviously do, um, then you cannot check your bank chest, which does really blow. Um, but for uh, for everything else, you can definitely use the bank chest. Um, it's also great if you need to uh, restore some of your armors and everything that might be degrading. Um, so... When you, when you either click return to Gilinor or you use the other one, it will give you a total summary of what you did. Um, so as you can see, I, I only got 246,928 anima. Uh, the best way to get anima right now is just to uh, um, keep your streak going and then also hit levels that you have not done before because the higher level you, the higher world that you are on and also if you have not beaten that world before, you will get a massive bonus of anima. At levels at world 70 and above, you do get like 500 and something thousand per level, but it does keep on going up the more uh, worlds that you actually beat. So if you're looking to stack up a large amount of anima, you're going to want to just keep on climbing on what you have already completed. At some point, though, you will get to a point where you're not able to continue going on, and that's when you will have to do basically what I just did right here, where you'll get an amount of anima like this. Um, but it does go pretty quick, and you will get better and better at doing that. Um, obviously this time right here was uh, really bad because I was making a video, um, but even even making a video like this, it's uh, it's 1 million anima per hour, which you can definitely obviously get way more than that. And honestly, you really shouldn't even use that as a, as a reference. <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, that is basically what Shatter Worlds is. It is basically um, Gauntlet RuneScape Edition or Diablo-scape um, is basically what I'm calling it right now. Um, but you will be able to uh, buy the rewards and everything, and yeah, so that's really it on this video. It's quite a bit longer than what I was hoping, but I really hope this answers any questions you guys have about um, Shattered Worlds. If you have any more questions, you guys can put them in the uh, in the area below in the comments. Um, but like always, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, and feel free to subscribe to the channel, and uh, feel free to check out the Patreon page if you like to uh, if you like to get into investing or flipping. Uh, big shout out to everybody on there on Patreon for making everything possible for the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.